Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and in this video we're going to take a look at three options for performing layer 3 routing and at the same time we're going to clear up some common misconceptions. And let's begin with this topology. Over here we have the 1010 network and over here we have the 1020 network. And let's imagine we have a device over here on VLAN 10 and it wants to communicate with the device over here on VLAN 20. Because they're on different subnets they are going to need a default gateway, a router if you will, to forward that traffic onto its destination. And it's in this topology I'd like to talk about the three options we have for performing that layer three routing between different subnets. And here is option number one. I call it the traditional method, and that is to have a router with two interfaces. So for option number one, we're gonna use router two. And here in router two, it has two physical interfaces. One of those physical interfaces connects into the switch. And on the access port where that first interface connects, it's associated with VLAN 10. So I'll label those as well, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. The other physical interface it has is connected to the switch. And on that switch port, that port is associated with VLAN 20. And so we have one physical router, two physical interfaces, one interface in each of the VLANs. So PC1 would use R2 as its default gateway. PC3 could use R2 as its default gateway. And the traffic between those would go something like this. PC1 would forward traffic layer two to its default gateway. And that router would make a routing decision. And router two would then forward that packet on its way to PC3. So here's R2 acting as a traditional router. So I'm gonna put two physical interfaces, one in each of the VLANs. So there's one of our options for performing the layer three routing. So let me clear up my screen a little bit and let's take a look at option number two. For option number two, we're gonna use router one with one physical interface. And the question may come up, well, how in the world can router one with one physical interface route between two different subnets? And the answer is using sub interfaces. And here's how we pull that off. We have one physical interface that's connected to the switch. And then logically in the router, we create sub interfaces. And with some vendors, they refer to these sub interfaces as VLAN interfaces. So we could create a sub interface for VLAN 10 with an IP address appropriate for the other devices also in VLAN 10. And we could also create a sub interface for VLAN 20. So on the sub interface for VLAN 10, we could assign the IP address of 10.10.0.1. And for the VLAN 20 sub interface, we could use the IP address of 10.20.0.1. And then we could train all the devices in VLAN 10 to use .1 as their default gateway. And then we could train all the devices in VLAN 20 on the 10.20.0 subnet to use .1 as their default gateway. And then this router could perform routing functions between those two subnets. And a question may come up, well, how in the world is R1 going to know when a frame comes in? Is this belonging to, you know, VLAN 10 or VLAN 20? And the answer is trunking. We're going to configure the switch port right here as a trunk port. And these VLAN interfaces, these sub interfaces are associated with those specific VLANs. So this sub interface is going to be associated with VLAN 10. This sub interface is going to be associated with VLAN 20. And when the router sends frames into the switch, it's going to tag it. So using 802.1Q tagging, the router is going to tag the frames as they go into the switch with the appropriate VLAN. And the switch, when it sends frames up to the router, is also going to be doing 802.1Q tagging. And so this implementation, which was very, very popular a long, long time ago, isn't that common anymore. We'll talk about here why in a second with option number three. But this is referred to as router on a stick, or R-O-A-S for short. And that's because this router, look at it. <laughs> it looks like it's just one physical connection. Kind of looks like a router on a single stick right there. And that's why it's often called router on a stick. And one of the advantages of router on a stick is that if we have 20 or 30 VLANs and we want to route between them, we could create 20 or 30 logical VLAN sub interfaces and still leverage this one physical connection and do routing between all of those VLANs. However, as I mentioned, that's pretty much old school. We don't do that too much anymore on traditional routers. But there is yet a third option that's even more popular these days, and that is option number three to perform routing between subnets. So let me clean up my screen a little bit. And for this third option, we're not going to use router two with two physical interfaces. We're not going to use router one with one physical interface, but instead we are just going to use some additional functionality on this switch. So instead of just using a layer two only switch, we are going to use a multi-layer switch. And a multi-layer switch is a switch that can perform forwarding at layer two, like a traditional switch. And, and it also has the magical ability to create logical interfaces, layer three interfaces in each of the VLANs and then perform routing on the switch itself. So in the case of a multi-layer switch where the switch itself is also performing the routing function, the traffic never needs to leave up to router one or router two. The switch can perform the layer three routing by itself. And that's done with switched virtual interfaces. They are logical layer three interfaces that we create on the switch. 
So we'd create a switch virtual interface for VLAN 10, we'd create one for VLAN 20, and then we'd train all the devices here in VLAN 10 to use whatever the IP address is associated with the SVI as their default gateway. And for the devices here in VLAN 20 on the 10.20 subnet, we would train all of them for their default gateway to use the IP address associated with the switch virtual interface on the switch that's associated with VLAN 20. And then the switch can perform the routing between 10.10.0 and 10.20.0 and vice versa. And I've got a question for you. If we have hundreds of clients, what's the easiest and most efficient way of training all those devices on who their default gateway should be? If you're thinking, Keith, I bet it's DHCP, you'd be absolutely right. Now, to reinforce these three options for Layer 3 routing, I'd like to go ahead and walk you through the implementation of each of them right now. So for this first option, we'll use Router 2. And I want to make sure the switch has ports gig 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, and 1 slash 3 all associated with VLAN 10. And I also want to make sure the switch has ports 0 slash 3, 1 slash 2, and 1 slash 1 all associated as access ports for VLAN 20. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to open up a console to the switch. And let me size this up so we can see it. There we go. And to make this less of a typing exercise, let me go ahead and do a little pasting. And let's take a look at the commands we're about to implement. I'm basically telling the switch that on these three ports, they are all access ports in VLAN 10, and that for these three ports on the right in pink here, those three ports are going to be access ports in VLAN 20. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those commands in. And now the switch's work here is done. We now have three ports in VLAN 10 and three ports in VLAN 20. We can also verify that with a show VLAN brief just to confirm that. So I'll slide this over a bit, a little bit to the left. So here's VLAN 10 and its three ports, and here's VLAN 20 and its three ports. All right, fantastic. We're off to a good start. Next, let's focus our attention here at R2, and we'll configure its two interfaces, one that's going to be in VLAN 10 with its appropriate IP address, and the other interface, Gig00, which is going to be in VLAN 20 with its appropriate IP address. So we'll open up a console to R2. And once again, to make this a little less of a typing exercise, let me go ahead and paste in some commands here. And effectively, we're taking Gig01, which is the interface here on the left, we're bringing it up and assigning it the IP address of 10.10.0.2 with a 24-bit mask. And then for gig 0, 0 which is this interface here on the right, we're specifying an IP address of 10.20.0.2 with a 24-bit mask. So I'll go ahead and paste those commands in. And if we do a show IP route, it should have two directly connected networks. Good enough, the 10.10.0 network and the 10.20.0 network off of those two interfaces based on the IP addresses that we just applied. So we've got the switch configured, we've got the router configured, but we also, to make it a little bit easier, let's also enable DHCP services here on R2 so that we can dynamically hand out IP addresses to the PCs in VLAN 10 and also hand out IP addresses to the devices over in VLAN 20 as well. So here on R2, here's the configuration we're going to use. We're going to create a DHCP pool. We're going to name it VLAN 10. We're specifying the 10.10.0 network and the default gateway as 10.10.0.2 which is the IP address in the 1010 subnet that we just assigned on gig 0 slash 1 on R2. And then we're going to do a similar treatment for VLAN 20, but it's the 10.20.0 network, and the default gateway the clients there should use is 10.20.0.2, which is the IP address we just assigned on gig 00 here on R2. So we'll go ahead and paste those in. And now we need to identify whether or not that works. So let's go ahead and let's bring up PC1. We'll simply start it up. And let's also start up PC3. We'll start it up. And let's bring up consoles for PC1 and then PC3 as well. So we'll start with PC1. So here is PC1, and on this little virtual PC, I'm going to do a IP DHCP, and that should kick off the Discover Offer Request Acknowledge process. And let's do a show IP. So this device has the IP address <laughs> of 10.10.0.1, and its default gateway is 10.10.0.2. And let's go take a look at PC3. So here is PC3. Let's do an IP DHCP to kick off the door process here. That looks good. And we'll do a show IP. And this shows us that we have the IP address of 10.20.0.1. Great, great. And a default gateway of 10.20.0.2. So PC1 is at 10.10.0.1. So if we did a ping over to 10.10.0.1, this PC, PC3, should use its default gateway, which is at 10.20.0.2, who should make the routing decision and be able to forward it over to PC1. Let's verify that works. That looks great. Success. All right, so that's option one for routing between two different subnets using a router, an external router with two physical interfaces with one interface in one subnet and the other interface in a second subnet. All right, so let's continue this party by doing this. I'm going to right click here on router two and I'm going to go ahead and say stop. I'm going to take it out of commission so it's no longer running and let's power up router one and take a look at our second option here, which is router on a stick. So I'm going to start up router one. And for router on a stick to work, we need to do a few things at the switch. We need to make sure this port is a trunk port and willing to do 802.1Q tagging. And then on router one, we need to create a sub interface for VLAN 10. 
and another subinterface for VLAN 20 so it can logically perform the routing between those two subnets. So let's go do our switch work first here on gig 00 on the switch and configure that port as a trunk. So we'll open up a console to the switch. Here it is. And on the switch, here are the commands that we're going to implement. We're going to go into interface configuration for gig 00. We're going to specify that we want to use dot one Q, which if your switch supports ISL and dot one Q, you want to tell it exactly which one to support because dot one Q is the standard these days. And then this command switch port mode trunk says, hey, don't negotiate a trunk, just be a trunk. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that in. And then we can verify that with a show interface trunk. And this shows us that gig 00 is a trunk using 802.1q. So at the bottom here, it shows VLANs in spanning tree forwarding state and currently has none. And that's because spanning tree is going to take just a few moments here to converge. So if we wait just a few seconds and hit the up arrow key again and then press enter, now it's showing that that trunk is supporting VLANs 1, 10, and 20. So we want to make sure that VLANs 10 and 20 are permitted over the trunk because router 1 is going to have sub interfaces supporting both VLANs 10 and 20. All right, so now with the switch configuration done, let's go to R1 and let's enable the gig 00 interface and also create two sub interfaces, one for VLAN 10 on the left, one for VLAN 20 on the right. So let's bring up a console for R1 and here it is. And let's use these commands. So we're gonna go into gig 00 and bring it up so it's actually functional. And then we're gonna create two logical VLAN interfaces, also sometimes called sub interfaces, one for VLAN 10 and one for VLAN 20. So we don't have to use dot 10 to support VLAN 10. However, I'm doing that because it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that way, when you see the interface, you just logically know without looking at the config of that interface, which VLAN it's supporting. So in this logical sub interface called gig 00.10, here we're specifying which VLAN it's going to support and pay attention to regarding the 802.1q tags. And then we're giving it an IP address appropriate with the other devices in VLAN 10, which is the 10.10.0 address space. And we're gonna use dot one for R1. And we're doing similar treatment for the sub interface supporting VLAN 20. So we'll go ahead and put those commands in and that is done. So if we do a show IP route, this router now has a directly connected interface, a logical interface to the 10100 network. And let me scroll over the left here off of its gig 00.10. It also is directly connected to the 10.20.0 network using the local interface 00.20, that logical interface. So the last piece here on R1 is I'd like to set up DHCP pools once again so that our clients can learn about the correct default gateway to use. So the clients in VLAN 10 should use 10.10.0.1 and the clients in VLAN 20 should use 10.20.0.1, which are the IP addresses associated with the VLAN sub interfaces here on R1 that we just configured. So to pull that off, here are the commands that we're gonna use. We're gonna create a pool for VLAN 10. We're gonna create a pool for VLAN 20, specifying the appropriate default gateway for those clients to use. And we'll go ahead and put in those commands. All right, it is done. So one of the challenges now is that PC1 and PC3 have old information regarding which uh, default gateway they should use. So one quick fix to that here in EVNG is I'm gonna go ahead and wipe those VMs, just basically telling them to forget everything they possibly knew. And then I'll go ahead and bring them back up. So they're gonna come up not knowing anything from the previous config and we'll just run the DHCP process again. So here on PC1, we'll bring up a console for that and we'll issue the command to IP DHCP. And we'll do the same thing here on PC3 with IP DHCP. And then we'll take a look at each of them. So this is the PC1 on the left. We'll do a show IP and it is at 10.10.0.2 with the default gateway of 10.10.0.1 and the PC3 on the right, we'll do a show IP. It has the IP address of 10.20.0.2 with the default gateway of 10.20.0.1. Fantastic. So from here, we should be able to do a ping to 10.10.0.2, which is PC1's address. That should be forwarded to the default gateway, who should make a routing decision, forward it back down to PC1. In fact, before we do that, we can also capture that traffic here on the trunk, just to see the tagging involved as the traffic goes up to the router, and also as the traffic comes back from the router over to PC1. So to do that, I'm going to right click on R1, and from the drop down here in EVNG, select Capture, and let's capture on gig 00. And we'll select Ethernet. All right, that capture is currently running. Let's go ahead and do the ping. And so the ping is working. And then the capture is going to tell us the full story about what's really happening. So I'll go ahead and stop the capture. And let me make this a little bit bigger. So this is the packet from 10.20.02, which is the PC on the right, going to 10.10.02, the PC on the left. And as this traffic was being sent up to the router, it was being tagged with VLAN 20. And then the router made a routing decision and then forwarded it back down, but it forwarded it back down on the logical sub interface for VLAN 10. So we look at the next packet here. This is the traffic coming from the router on its way to the PC on the left. And here is tagging it with VLAN 10. And that way when the switch receives it, the switch knows, oh, this frame is associated with VLAN 10. And that's why we're gonna have two entries as we look at the trunk traffic for every packet that goes through. One that's going up to the router and one that's coming down from the router. 
And then for the replies, here we have a reply coming back from the PC on the left going up to the router from VLAN 10, and then from the router being forwarded over to the PC on the right, which is now being tagged with VLAN 20. All right, so let me go ahead and close that capture. And that's our second option called router on a stick, where we have one router, one physical interface, but it has multiple logical sub interfaces to perform the routing and again, leveraging 802.1Q. Now the third option, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off router one here so it's no longer active. And the third option is not to use any external router, but simply use this multi-layer switch by creating two VLAN interfaces, one for VLAN 10, one for VLAN 20, and then training the clients to go ahead and use the IP addresses associated with those SVIs, those switch virtual interfaces, as their default gateway. So let me demonstrate that for you right now here on our switch. So let's bring up a console for our switch. So here it is, and here are the commands we're going to use to create two new VLAN interfaces, also called switch virtual interfaces, one for VLAN 10 and one for VLAN 20. So on the switch, we'll simply specify interface VLAN 10, that's how you create this logical layer three interface. We'll make sure it's not shut down. And then we're gonna specify an IP address appropriate for that VLAN. So in this case, I'm gonna give the switch the last octet of dot 100 for the 1010 network. And for VLAN 20, I wanna give the last octet of dot 100 on the 10.20.0 network. So we'll go ahead and put in those commands. And then also we need to make sure that all of our devices in those VLANs have the correct information about now using dot 100 as their default gateway for those specific subnets. So because router one and router two are both turned off, we've got no DHCP servers. So right here on the switch, we can also make it a DHCP server for both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And the syntax to pull that off would be something like this. We have a pool for VLAN 10 for the 10.10.0 network saying the default gateway is dot 100. We have another pool for the 10.20.0 subnet specifying the default gateway should be dot 100 for that 10.20.0 subnet. So we'll put those commands in. And then once again, to have a nice fair playing field, I'm gonna go ahead and take PC one and stop it. Actually, I should have wiped it and I'll take PC3 and I'll go ahead and wipe it. And just to make sure that I don't have anything left over, let's use PC2 and PC4, they're fresh. So we'll right click here on PC2, click on start, and we'll right click on PC4, click on start, and then we'll bring up consoles to each of those and tell them to be DHCP clients. This time, they should be getting DHCP information from the switch, the multi-layer switch acting as a DHCP server. So let's go to PC2 first. So here on PC2, we'll do an IP DHCP. And on PC4, let's go over there. We'll do a IP DHCP and let's go take a look at the configs on each. So here is PC2 on the left and we'll do a show IP and this is the DHCP server at 10.10.0.100. Good, good, good. There's the IP address the client is going to be using at dot one with its default gateway at dot 100. Perfect. And on PC4, we peek over there and do a show IP. The DHCP server once again is the switch acting as the DHCP server. The client's IP address is dot one on the 10.20.0 network and the default gateway is 10.20.0.100. So if we did a ping over to 10.10.0.1, which is the IP address that PC2 is using and pressed enter, this client PC4 is gonna use its default gateway, which is the switch's switch virtual interface. The switch is gonna make a routing decision and then forward the packet onto the destination over here. And on the switch, we can also verify the routing table by just doing a show IP route. And we can see it has two directly connected networks, one for the 10.10.0, one for the 10.20.0. And those are because of these switched virtual interfaces that we just configured a few moments ago. So there you have it, my friend, three options for performing layer three routing. I'll see you in the next live event or video soon. Until then, be well, be happy, and be nice to everybody. What you're putting in